All right, today we're going to look at the AXLF AI8. This has voltage and current inputs. If we go to our project here, you can see I've already got it loaded. And then I also have a smart elements in here that I'm going to go over in another video. One of the key important differences between these two is this one is voltage and current and is also 15 bits plus a sign. This one is zero to 10,000. So it's only about 12 bits. Um, so accuracy, depending on your accuracy level, you may want to go with the AI-8 or the smart elements. All right, so let's get this set up. Uh, there's two data formats. Uh, one is inline and one is S7 compatible. If we look at the data sheet real quick, you can see that in the IBIL format, it's 30,000 counts uh, for the whole scale. And in the S7 compatible format, it's 27,648. So we're going to leave it in the inline format. Um, if we look at the wiring, we'll see that on the left hand side, channel one, we have it wired for current. That's because the bottom two terminals are current input and the upper two terminals are voltage input. So we're going to do a four to 20 milliamp on channel one. We're going to do zero to 10 volts on channel two. And then I'm just going to actually make all the other channels inactive. That way we don't have any errors present when we run the program. All right, now that we have all of our channels inactive, we're gonna go over to our programming. Now with the PLC Next, you are able to bring in a library. So if we go to the PLC Next store, we search for analog in the search box, we end up with AXL analog. Now this is a library from Phoenix and you get a couple of function blocks. You get scaling in and scaling out. So this is a very basic block. This is your analog word in. Uh, this is if you were using it over Profinet and you wanted to make sure you actually had valid data available so you weren't just spewing data that was invalid. And then we have our low limit, our high limit, our range and to substitution. So let's look at that real quick. Uh, in the range, you'll see that these are, you'll match up the card that you have. So we have an AXL AI8. We're doing one zero to 10 volt input, which we're gonna put a one. And we're doing one four to 20 milliamp, which we'll put a three. Now, if we were using that smart elements card, it's down here and you'll notice that that gets a five, um, mainly because that's changing the scaling again from zero to 30,000 counts to zero to 10,000 counts. So let's go ahead and get that library loaded so we can go to add user library. Uh, currently mine's just in the downloads folder cause I'm just playing around and you'll find it in files. So there's your library. Um, now that it's been added, we can close this window up. We can expand the programming window and we'll see that we have this AXL analog. Now today I'm gonna do this in function block just cause sometimes it is easier to see than structured text, but in the real world, we'd probably do structured text. So we'll take this block and drag it in. Now that we're in, we have the same parameters we just talked about. So the word analog in is going to be attached to the card. So we could say something like E for external, and we could say AI1. And we can right click, hit create new variable, make that an external variable. And it's already been added as a word, which is what we want. Now, since we don't have to worry about the Profinet being valid or not, we're actually just gonna put true because the, valid, the data will always be valid given that we are using the local bus. The low limit. So we're gonna look at the four to 20 milliamp channel in this one. So the low limit is actually going to be 4.0. These are real numbers. And then the upper limit is going to be 20.0. These could also be variables or anything like that. If we go back, this is where you're going to get your I range information. Um, so we are using an AXL AI8 in the 4 to 20. So that's going to be a 3. So we're just going to put a 3. And then substitute, that's also in here. So substitute, um, the default is already zero. I'm gonna leave that alone. 
And then we're going to go ahead and grab another one to do our 0 to 10 volt scaling. So we're going to do EAI2. Uh, we're going to make this true because the data is always valid. And then since we're going to do 0 to 10 volts, we're just going to scale it as 0 to 10 volts. So 0 in the low limit, uh, 10 in the high limit. The I range, we'll go back and double check our table, but 0 to 10 volts is the number 1. So we'll be able to put a number one in there and then we'll leave the substitution alone again. So we'll right click, make this an external variable. That way we can get to it in our analog card and we'll go back to our analog card and go to data list. Under the data list, you'll see you basically have two options. You have the ability to do um, a word array or uh, individuals. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use the individuals today. So we'll be able to select variable and we have AI1 and we have AI2. So that should be all we need to do. We don't actually need to connect any variables to the right hand side. Um, we'll be able to just monitor those values in real time. So let me get connected to the PLC and we'll be right back. All right, now that we're connected and online, you'll see that I have my two analog blocks that we made. Um, we'll see that the top one is our 4 to 20 milliamp signal. The bottom is our 0 to 10. If you look at the bottom of the screen, uh, you'll see that we're actually simulating 4 milliamps and 1.5 volts. If I adjust the voltage a little bit, we'll see a change in here. And then if I actually put my meter uh, to run through some stepping drills, uh, you'll see that we end up with the same value here as we do there, um, which is very nice. So that's just a quick tutorial on analog scaling in an AI8 card.